Thank you all for coming. Um, I've done in Green. I'm an ocean, I've been an oceanographer and have ocean for 39 years. I'd like, I'd like to welcome Ms. Cecile Ingram here today. Um, her husband, uh, Carrie Ingram, my former boss, was the inspiration for the project. That, that was the beginning of it. Also, I want to ca thank uh, Captain Greg Irish and Navajo's Ocean's commanding officer, commanding officer for the letter of introduction that sort of got me to the door here. Um, leadership at Navajo Ocean has been very helpful. And in addition, I wish to thank my fellow Navajo Ocean employees who helped collect this autonomous on-order vehicle data. Without their, this, their help, this project would not, not have happened. So from 1939 to 1945, 766 U-boats were sunk. U-boat sinkings increased every year to a high of 249 in 1944. And in 1945, the sinkings totaled 120. The yearly plots of U-boats sunk show the progress of the war in the Atlantic and portray World War II history. In 1942, U-166 sank passenger plane to Robert E. Lee, which was on its way to the port of New Orleans. The escort vessel patrol Corvette, PC-566, which had been radioing New Orleans for a pilot at the time of the attack, and in turn dropped 10 depth chargers, sinking U-166. In 2001, CNC Technologies discovered U-166 while conducting a deep water pipeline survey in a location more than 120 miles away from the original reported sinking position. The Naval Oceanographic Office, now most you know, surveyed U-166 in 2011 during an autonomous unordered vehicle exercise in the Gulf of Mexico. Side scan sonar imagery and electronic steel camera images were recorded. 766 U-boats were sunk between 1939 and 1945. This is all. There was only one sunk in the Gulf? Yes, only, only one in the Gulf. They, they sunk a lot more ships in the Gulf than that, but there were a lot of ships sunk in the Gulf, but only one U-boat was sunk. What happened to the uh, ship that was torpedoed by the Anybody survived it? Uh, some people survived and were picked up by the patrol corvette and were taken into the noise. Because they were supposedly going into Tampa and they had to, had to be diverted for some reason and went on to New Orleans. And, and on board the uh, patrol, the Robert E. Lee were uh, several several survivors from other torpedo attacks farther, farther away, you know, that they picked up. And when they radioed for a pilot, they were radioing for the riverboat pilot to take them through the mouth of the river? I, I'm not going to be ready for a pilot to come into port. I mean, they were, they were trying to set up their arrangements to come into port and have everybody line, linesman there and everybody. And during this time, boom, the, uh, the, the U-166 shot a torpedo and, and sunk the Robert E. Lee. And Patrol Corvette took that turn, dropped 10, 10 jet chargers, and sunk the uh, U-166. Right, right there, you know. In 1939, <laughs> 90 boats were sunk around Great Britain, Western Europe. The, the, the Germans were attempting to blockade the, the, uh, the British Isles. In 1944, U-boat sinkings, 1940, I'm sorry, 24 were still were sunk, still around the UK and Western Europe. This, this is where the war was going on, so that's where the U-boats were, and so you, you, you could sit past while you the, uh, the uh, conglomeration of you know, all the sinkers in, in this area here. In 1941, 35 U-boats were sunk. Sinkings expanded to the Mediterranean, to the Mediterranean and across to Allied Convoy routes across the Atlantic. So the U.S. the U.S. ended the war, War II, after the Japanese raid on Pearl Harbor on December 7th. And Germany declared war on the U.S. 11 December 1941. U-boat sinkings totaled 86 in 1942, expanding further west, north, south, and east. Larger U-boats with torpedoes removed, named milk cows, supplied the U-boats on extended voyages. They're out there, wherever the war is going on, there, there the U-boats are there. You know? Was that a U-boat sunk on the off the tip of Cuba? Yes. 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 Yeah, it just hadn't quite made it into the Gulf of Mexico. I guess it was in on the way. Yes. Yeah. And there were, we had a lot of uh, uh, air, air, airplanes flying around trying to trying to find them. When, when the U-boat was, was not, not uh, 
not fighting or trying to, you know, torpedo another ship. A lot of times, they're most times they're on the surface because they could conserve their batteries by staying on the surface. So there's a lot of them were, were just cruising along on the, on, in the air until they, until somebody came along and made, made them die. You vote sinkings in 1943, 243 more than doubled the number of sunk in 1942. This can be attributed to the breaking of the German code, better sonar, better radar, and search theory. In comparison to the to the U-boat activity, what was the activity of German uh, <coughs> war vessels in the Gulf? Uh, I don't think there were German war vessels. I, I don't don't know of any any. Uh, German ships are in the, in the Gulf. I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't read about that. Now, the only one was the Graf Spree. Once the Graf Spree was, was, was destroyed outside of Monday there was no oh, that's, surface that's, yeah. ships okay. that were Nazis. Okay. That's good to know. The five main reasons for, for 243 U-boat sinkers in 43. First, in 1942, a British ship crew boarded the U-570 and captured Ger the German Enigma coding machine. This enabled the Allies to break the German code. And General Admiral, to keep track of his U-boats, General Admiral Donitz, the Admiral in charge of U-boats, directed our U-boats to come to the surface and transmit their position back to Berlin once per day. Land-based and sea-based radio operators listen to these transmissions. This transmission is only lasted 12 to 15 seconds. But British analysts back at Bletchley Park were able to play them back at a slower speed and began to decipher the messages. After two or three transmissions, a lot of planes and or ships were waiting for them when they surfaced. Some days, Admiral Donitz sent 60 to 70 messages to his U-boats a day, hoping to direct his U-boats to more kills. He did not know the allies that were listening and was not aware the codes had been broken. Of course, we weren't aware that they had broken our Navy codes in the Atlantic. Yes, they, they, luckily they, they were not as effective as we were, though. Do we know the specific time that they were supposed to uh, transmit their position? No, sir. I, I think that the, the, they came up once per day, and I, I, I'm not, not never saw a, a specific time okay. what I read. But they, they the, he was, Donitz was was uh, was was a like a micromanager in, in a sense. He was he was sending messages back and forth to different U boats, trying to figure out what was wrong and di didn't understand because only transmitted for 12, 15 seconds. They couldn't slow it down or make it easier to, to read or whatever. He, he figured nobody else could either. So we they, they were we were able to do it. Actually, the British did it. And, and, uh, but uh, there was I don't I never heard of a specific time. It was just like whenever they could. I imagine each boat had to have a specific time. Otherwise, everybody would be transmitting over everybody else. Maybe so. Yes, sir. I, I bet so. Yes, sir. I, I, I haven't seen that in the in the, in the, in the room that I ran. That. Bay of the Bay of Biscay Offensive trained bomber pilots to catch U-boats coming and going from French ports on the bay. And the Allied ba advances in sonar and radar made it easier to look at German U-boats. Yeah. But in 1943, mathematician Bernard Cooper <coughs> used Bayesian models and mathematical tools for determining the likelihood where U-boats would, would be located. Search, which is which, what they call search theory. Koopman and fellow mathematicians would hypothesize and theorize what U-boats would do next. Search theory was used to best distribute resources and most efficiently find the U-boats. U-boat exit paths from the French ports during German occupation of World War II. You can see that U-boats were ports were from Brest in the north to Bordeaux in the south. And what the, what the English would do was would, would fly, would fly their bombers across and use a microwave radar, which the Germans couldn't do. Could, could not detect. They would they would they would see these U-boat pass or wakes on the, on the surface of the ocean. They would turn and follow these U-boat pass, and they had these also had these searchlights with them, and they would built into the to the bombers, and they would illuminate the, the, the uh, U-boat and drop bombs to sink them. And if they could if they didn't sink them, they would try to direct other <coughs> other uh, ships towards them. But this whole area on, on this all all, all the shallow area here, see so where it gets deeper here. From here, there to there, they were mostly on the surface. There were some stories of U-boats going to sea, everybody drinking champagne, and all of a sudden, boom, they, the, the, the bombers had found them and, and, and sunk them. So they, they were not aware of the, the uh, and over, over during, the year, during the war, as 
as the technology advanced for, for both sides, you had uh, the, this microarray radar, which made it, which they could not detect. It was the longest time until the very end, of, towards the end of the war, that we could use that microarray radar to, to microarray radar, excuse me, to detect where, where the U-boats were. German U-boats and pins in, in France, um, they're still there. They're, they're such massive concrete structures that the, the, sorry, the Allies could, could not, could not uh, see how, how big they're, they're still there. One day I'd like to go visit them, possibly. Are they used for anything yet? Uh, I'm not certain, but there's some, some writing on some of them. One of these has, this one I think has, a, has something written on there. I couldn't tell what it said. I think they, they probably, you know, use them to store things. It's like, you know, uh, if you had a, had a nice yacht, it'd be nice for them. You both seconds in 1941, 249 was the highest in World War II. Can, can, can be attributed to the same factors as in 43. Plus, Soda Boys were introduced in late 19, 1944, enabling aircraft to listen to U-boats below. Pickens began to concentrate back towards Europe, and, and Admiral Donalds was still raining his U-boats, not aware the coast had been, had been broken. So his micromanagement was really helping us sink the U-boats. How did the Germans explain the extraordinary <laughs> rise, increase in number of well, the, 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 the book I read, uh, um, a periscope view of the Battle of the Atlantic, had, had uh, talked about it in the later part of the war. The gentleman who wrote, wrote the book um, uh, said that people were starting to suspect things were, you know, something was, it could, could possibly them, be them coming to the surface and still transmitting positions. Because they were doing it less and less, I think. The smarter the, the captains were now, they were still coming back. You know. They did. They did the elaborate side. Do you have any sense of, with so many U-boats being sunk, what sort of dent that put in the Germans' war-making ability? Because it seems like that that must have sucked up and gotten rid of a whole lot of resources. Well, that, that, some, some of the books I've read have, have talked about that by 19, 1943, even if some of this other stuff had not happened, that our, our war machine had gotten so much, so much, much better or, or building things and that we were actually building more than, than, than we were losing now. We were ahead of them, and they, they were going farther behind because we were, we were bombing you know, Germany everywhere. It just the, the whole whole effort for the bombing from, you know, from, from, from England was in the German so that, was a, that put a big dent in it. U-boat sinkings in 1945, 120, proved that superior Allied search methods and, and intelligence helped win the war. Sinkings were concentrated along convoy routes and close to Europe. Many U-boats at the end of the war were scuttled at the dock. You'll see now that they were just still, if you just followed the convoy routes going back across to, to Europe. And a lot of this, a lot of the, uh, you boats here were sunk at the dock, sunk at the docks because they didn't want to turn them over to the Allies. Yes. Are we looking at a smaller number of U-boat sinkings, or are they just more concentrated close to Europe? Well, sir, there, there's a, it's a small. It's only 120, and, and some of those are all on top of each other. I mean, I, I, this is zoomed out a little bit. You, you could, you could actually. This is this map is made with the GIS, and you could zoom in and out. I tried to keep the same um, picture look, the same look about each picture that I could. And, and you could really, if you wanted to, you could have zoomed in and seen a lot more U-boats, the whole 120, but it appears that they're, they're, they're fewer, you know, so. There were, according to the book I had, it was 120 uh, boats up that year. In 2001, CNC Technology discovered U-166 and 5,000 feet of water while conducting a deep water pipeline survey. The new location of U-166 is more than 120 miles away from the reported sinking position over here. This first position was, was actually re, 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 a position reported from an airplane that flew over and saw a U-boat dive, and they thought that somehow that got, I don't know, I don't know why they didn't record the sinking when, when the patrol corvette sunk it, but because it was definitely ha happened there. But uh, somehow it got transferred to be this one position of the U-boat sinking 166. It's just, it's, uh, just a miscoordination of the facts.
In 2011, during the Gulf of Mexico Remus AUV operation evaluation exercise, they eventually collected the side scan imagery. Here we have the side scan imagery of Robert B. Lee, which was sunk by U-166. And we have side scan imagery of U-166, which was sunk by Control Corvette after dropping 10, ten depth targets. And, the, and the, as it sunk, the U-166 broke into a bow section and, to, and uh, from the deck gun to the stern section. To, this is side scan imagery we collected in 2011. Were there any German survivors in the south? No, sir. They're, they're, they're all still in there. All, all of them. In, I, I, don't know, I don't know what access animals or, or whatever critters would, or down there would, would have to this. But I'm sure the water depth there? 5,000 feet. Electron still current images were also taken during the 2011 NABO Remus AUV OVD. And we have a photo mosaic of U-166 here which is a lot of little pictures all knitted together. And we have a uh, ESC picture, a digital camera picture of a 105-millimeter uh, deck gun and a corresponding side scan imagery for it, which shows you where it was on the, on the, on the, on the uh, submarine there. <coughs> Any sense of about how long that'll be there until it just rusts away? Uh, no, sir, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm a long time, I think, because there's not a whole lot of oxygen down there. It's, it's pretty deep, so it's, it stays. Uh, that's one thing about stuff on the bottom of the ocean. If, if it's if it's in deep water, it stays where pretty much like it is for a long time. Uh, as opposed to a wooden vessel, which is, would, you know, just decompose and just kind of go get soft and just fall apart. Here we have uh, an electronic steel camera image of the uh, deck gun. And if you see this deck gun is 18 inches, the seat on this deck gun from the side here is 18 inches wide, and this spider crab must be about, about two feet wide. Mm -hmm. uh, just just happens to be there. I mean, it's, it's just something that's on the bottom right there. So I mean, there's, 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 there's fish and spider crabs, and just still, I don't see, didn't see any fish in the pictures we took, but did see the spider crab. I, I think there were several of you that you had some more other pictures too. There's a conning tower hatch picture, ESC picture here, and. This is there's a conning tower hatch, and you have a marine encrusted anti aircraft gun, which is off the back of the, the uh, conning tower of the U-166. What kind of marine life is growing down there? Is it you're well below the photo so. It's anemones and, and uh, some sort of soft coral. Okay. I think it's, it's a, anemones and soft coral, and there's a, a few fish, there, but they're mostly uh, fish that are adapted to, to, to with low light. You know, some of these angler fish, possibly, if you, if you happen to find one there. Possibly if you got in the, um, underneath around some of the, uh, in the, the parts of the, the U-166 or, or the Robbie Lee, you would probably see some fish living inside, you know, if using that, that as a habitat if you keep, to keep the larger fish from getting to them, possibly. Here are some uh, color Im CNC color images from U-166 from their, I uh, got from their website. And you can see here, here's the uh, deck gun with the seat from the side, side view the deck gun seat from above. Here we have the uh, anti-aircraft gun with marine life on it. You can see a little bit more of the what the the, the, the uh, anemone stuff here and, and all this on, 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 the, on the railing here. And here's the uh, inside the conning tower. You can see the hatch down in there. There's the periscope right there. There's some uh, images. I was uh, a year, two, year, almost two years ago now. I was watching 60 Minutes one night before the following weekend. I was going to place to go into a uh, meeting and show these, show these, these slides. And on um, 60 Minutes, you saw uh, pictures of the uh, Robbery Lee, the bow section and the stern section, and you have the uh, U-166. And, and Bob Ballard was talking about the American frontier that had been, been explored, and most of it was underwater. And here, here are the pictures of the, the Robbery Lee and the, and the uh, U-166. So I grabbed those and stuck them in here, and you said, Gave him credit. <laughs> but he's, uh, I mean, that's just emphasizes that, that, that people are interested in the U-166 in the Gulf of Mexico. Do you know if Ballard was working for Woods Hole at the time or URI? Uh, I, I don't know what, what, I don't know what his relationship with those. I know he does work for, for Woods Hole, works for, worked for uh, uh, Columbia University and, um, but now he's at the University of Rhode Island. I was just 
Okay. I'm not sure. No. There are some vessels of interest via the Patrol Corvette 560, TC-566. Uh, you know, you need 166 with your deck gun on the, on the foredeck. Uh, the Robbie Lee, and more pictures of U-166 here. How many, how many soldiers would they have? U-boat? Uh, I think 60 or 70. And it might be more like 45, but I'm, 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 I've, I've seen it, but I've, I've forgotten what the exact number is. Looks pretty big. Really not that big, and, and then especially when you get down to size, it's real, real small. The, the submariners that people have traveled with on the U-boats and even submariners today are special kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> they have a, uh, you know, an ability to, to do what they do. You know why the, uh, the Robert Lee was diverted from Tampa to, to New Orleans? Uh, I, it has something to do with weather, or, or, or I read it, but it, is, it was. Something with, do with docking. I'm, I'm not sure why they couldn't get docking all, all of a sudden, but they, they were they were diverted to New Orleans, and so if they had docked in in, uh, in Tampa, it would have been some problem. <coughs> so I mean, it just happened, that, and, and UN 66 was sitting outside of New Orleans, waiting for the ship, ship to come and go. You know, but I think they actually had sunk one one or two ships for the Robbie Lee. What was the passenger complement? I mean. Uh, uh, it was a commercial. It's commercial, yes. It was. It was. It was, it was a passenger freighter, so it was a little, little boat. So you could probably have 20 or 30, 40 people as passengers, and the rest of it was most, mostly a freighter. Okay. It's my, it's my understanding. I'm not, I don't know the exact. Things. Yes. <coughs> if it, it appears only only one U-boat was sunk in the Gulf of Mexico, <coughs> is there any sense why? 166 was sitting there outside of New Orleans if it otherwise didn't seem to be a really attractive place for them to hang out? Well, I, I, they were, the U-boats were in the Gulf, more U-boats were in the Gulf, and, and because they were just, some of the information I read about the, about the war, where they were sinkings out, out of Houston, out of, out of uh, Tampa, out of, you know, any of the Gulf, Gulf Coast, uh, Places just that we, we never we didn't get any of them gotcha. South Island, you know, and it just happened. And, and the, the interest in the 166 is because you know it's, it's right here. You know, so. gotcha. we, we only got one of them, and they just sank 500 boats. Hmm. Mm -hmm. There were there were I don't know the exact number of ships sunk in the Gulf, but there were mm -hmm. quite a few of them. So anyway, now most of those uh, ESC and side scan images of the 166 collected in the Gulf. Make a visual connection to World War II history. That's the, the sort of the, the two parts. One was the the plots that I showed that uh, had the five five years of, or six years of World War II. Um, you know, that's that's actual history, but we feel like we have a connection to World War II history by taking pictures of the U-166 in the Gulf here. So we have several questions on Facebook. Um, Great, if I may. Yes, sir. Um, Christopher asked, uh, "What was the importance of the milk, milk cow, milk cows you mentioned earlier in your presentation?" Yes, sir. They they were uh, converted U-boats, and they turned out to be Italian U-boats. <coughs> when the they were a little bit larger than, than they were a little bit larger than the uh, regular U-boat, and so they took the, the torpedoes out of them and used them as freighters to, to support the U-boats uh, as they went farther down to South America. A lot of them stayed over. It would, it, would, it would enable the U-boats to stay at sea longer and sink more, sink more until they, the U-boat would stay out until they shot all its torpedoes and then go, go back in. So it enabled them to get, either get more torpedoes or they would carry torpedoes possibly and, and, and food and, and, and other supplies. They were, they were passed just like a freighter. Okay. Uh, Bill, watching from Kansas, asked, what percentage of men and U-boats were lost? Is that known? Yes, sir. But I, uh, it's, uh, it, it was a quite, quite quite high. I think it's sixty or seventy percent. And I'm, I'm I'm guessing. I think it's sixty or seventy percent. Thirty-nine thousand German submarines and thirty-one thousand died. Oh wow! That's that's eighty eighty. You got it. Eighty or ninety percent. So most most got most U boats that went out after we'd broken the codes and stuff. They didn't come back. I mean, we went after forty-three. Most, most guys that were going, most you boats were going to sea weren't coming back. I mean, it's just, uh, um, you know, 
it was the end of the war, and, and really the <coughs> beginning of, the, of that that surge was really with the, with the uh, uh, Bay of Biscay operation. That was I read, I found that in there. And one last one uh, from Jason. Um, who writes, my grandmother once told me U-boats were seen off of Biloxi, Mississippi. I believe her. Um, <laughs> Operation Drumbeat was thoroughly thought out, but poorly executed. Would, is that what you think? Uh, very possibly, yes, sir. Um, I, I, you, could, you could say that possibly so there. Um, we were, uh, you know, during the war, I don't know how, how well the... Uh, you know, we, I think that on the East Coast they were trying to get keep the whites out, but the, the, and the, I'm not sure how well, how well we did that in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the Gulf. But Operation Drumbeat was, was possibly, uh, you know, it, it, it became not so effective as we became, as, we, as our efforts and, and, and ways of hunting the U-boats increased, you know, so. Do, do you have any idea how many ships throughout the war were sunk by U-boats? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I don't not 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 the exactly the number. That's, I, I, that's, that number's there. That, I, uh, one thousand five hundred and forty-five. There we go. One thousand five hundred and forty-five. Somebody knows. I looked it up this morning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and nine thousand nine thousand five hundred merchant marine oh, lost their lives. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, the, and, and the one, one, one interesting thing that I read in the, in, in, in the last couple of years of talking about you boats had never sunk one of the troop, troop, excuse me, troop carrier ships that we had, troops going up to the other, across the Atlantic. They never sunk one of those. They always, always just merchant ships. I guess they thought they were getting better bang for the buck <coughs> trying to get, keep supplies down or something. But, uh, they never did sink a troop ship. Great. Thank you, Donnie. Thank you. Thank you.